Make Peace with Nature is a syndicated public affairs presentation of this station dealing with solutions to problems of energy, conservation, and the environment. Today's program will be hosted by David Serber. Hello, and welcome to Make Peace with Nature. Today, a close look at the work and accomplishments of a man of dedication and vision. First off, to set the stage for the discussion, here is an evocative video supplied to us by the Heinz Family Foundation of Pittsburgh. Long ago, before the first human was born, before the first tree began reaching for the sun, her life began. She breathes and grows. Her blood rushes through her veins. She can speak her mind and she can feel pain. She can feed us when we're hungry. She can heal us when we're sick. She has the power to give us energy and the power to make us smile. She's not a thing. She's the earth. And there's a reason we call her mother. Every day, 19 more of the earth species disappear forever. But there is hope. With your help, whales have begun to return. The bald eagle is off the endangered list. And one million acres of rainforest were protected forever. We only have one planet. We only get one chance. Our mother needs our help. Do something, anything. Well, it is only fair to explain that no one person would be able to devise and implement the plans of the numerous conservation organizations which work to make the greater Cincinnati area a safer, cleaner, greener, more energy efficient place to live. There is, I make bold to suggest, one man who is, to say the least, doing his share and then some. More than two million people live in the greater Cincinnati area. There is no subway system or light rail, and though a streetcar is under construction in downtown Cincinnati, there is a carbon footprint which many seek to reduce in the interests of global climate change mitigation and enhance quality of life through conservation measures and other lifestyle changes which we will describe in this program. Brewster Rhodes is my guest. He is a distinguished community leader with a long track record of public service here and around the country. He holds a BA from Williams College and among other positions, was a senior advisor to former Ohio Governor Ted Strickland. More after this. The views expressed on Make Peace with Nature are those of the participants and not necessarily those of this station or the program's underwriters. The whole idea behind this program is to provide solutions to problems of energy, conservation, and the environment. I know what the problems are, Brewster knows, and most of you who watch this program on a regular basis know that, ah, what can, the questions are this, what can be done to improve the air, quality of the air, and other features of the environment? How long will it take? How much will it cost? And who will pick up the tab? Those are the harder questions. So 
we've tackled them now for low these many years and God willing for the foreseeable future. So again, thanks for all you're doing and thanks for the work of all the people who've been in your, this chair w over the years. Well, thanks Dave, I appreciate it. And, you know, I, I appreciate your kind introduction, but look, uh, I'm, there's, I'm just one person who believes deeply that uh, that film is right, yes. that we have an incredible earth. We all, we all know this is sort of sappy to say. The question is what are we as individuals committed to doing in our own lives, in the, li in, in the way we operate our businesses and organizations, and the way we run our local governments, and how we run our state governments, and ultimately, obviously, nationally and internationally. So what is it that, we're, that we actually can do and, are, and should encourage each other to do locally to make a difference? Oh and, right. uh, and that's what you know, I'm trying to do in my life, and thousands and thousands of people in our region and around the world are trying to do as well. So you know, the question, though, really is how can you get people working together to do things that have uh, an impact at scale, not just one person doing something over here, one person doing something over there that may individually uh, contribute to the in improvement of the environment, but can we change systems, can we change the way we operate, can we in fact have a viable alternative transportation system in our region, for example, uh, whether that's a combination of light rail, of, uh, of other transit options, a uh, much more extensive interconnected bus system, of, uh, of uh, off-road transportation-oriented uh, trail systems for, for bikes, for example, um, are there, uh, and having a red bike program like we now have here in Cincinnati so that people can make use of bikes for that last mile, that short trip from um, from where they uh, get it off on a, pub on a bus to get to their place of work, uh, mm -hmm. worship, or mm -hmm. play. Um, what are things we can do about changing the food system in our community so that we're not dependent upon transporting food across the country or across the world to serve our needs here that also grows uh, the economy, wa living wage jobs, uh, helps people have the resources they need to be successful and stable themselves financially and economically in their own community. You know, what can we do about outdoor recreation, about energy conservation? These are the kind of things that an organization like Green Umbrella that I worked with for four years and is doing a great job without me, fortunately, um, as now that I've stepped down. Um, that's, those are the, the challenges that that organization is trying to think through. Tackling the big problems in ways that people can actually figure out how they can play a role in, in, deal, in addressing these issues that the film so nicely draws up. Right. I agree with everything, and nobody watching would disagree with anything you said. There right. was one thing you said that I found uh, perplexing. You said in enumerating uh, the response of what can we do, isn't it in fact that, a, uh, that things will change only if a sufficient number of individual people or families can do things like recycling and turn the thermostat down and put in solar energy Excellent, yep. and put in uh, more insulation and all. So won't it be in the aggregation or Absolutely. summation of all those things that anything really will change? Absolutely, it can't just be one person here, one person there. It's gotta be thousands and thousands, ultimately to a tipping point of the majority of, of, uh, of folks in the community decide they wanna turn thermostats down, they wanna invest in insulation and uh, tighten up the envelope of their house. They want to make sure that they dramatically increase what they recycle, what they reduce, what they compost. Um, to in turn take the burden off the landfills and and, uh, and put resources back into our um, into our resource system. So, yeah, we have to get to scale of people taking individual actions and in, and businesses and organizations and nonprofits and and universities and local governments taking collective actions that actually uh, when you add it all up has impact, actually reduces the amount that goes to the landfills in the region, reduces the amount of uh, gas and diesel fuel that are, that are sold within this region, that actually, um, uh, as I say, conserves energy, reduces the amount of uh, electricity that, it, that is consumed in the built environment in our community, right? right. All that sounds fine, but d d is this being done? Well, yeah, I mean, it's be it definitely it's being done, and it's being done through uh, folks deciding they want to work together around a common goal. So the Green Umbrella Organization, and I can't speak for them now, but uh, they're continuing to do this work in each of the areas of, the, of energy and waste and transportation, and outdoor recreation, and, and local food pr promotion and watershed management and protection, I have developed measurable goals by 2020 that uh, are monitored month by month, year by year, to actually see if progress is being made 
uh, around. And, and so the question is, what do we want to do? How do we go about making those changes happen? Reducing the amount of energy consumed, for example, and then figuring out how we can get every single person we possibly can in this region, um, residential, commercial, customers of, of Duke Energy, for example, to do things that will reduce the demand on the system and promote renewable and alternative energy deployment within the region. So setting up a system like Solarize Cincinnati, a program in the city of Cincinnati that makes it easy for people to find out how they can go solar. Right. Let me stop example. you there. Let yes. me use that as an example. Yeah. Does the city of Cincinnati have a tax incentive or are there other federal incentives which would encourage people? Because the installation of solar panels in one's home is not cheap. Well, there's still a federal. Now, wait a minute, is that true? It's, no, not, no, absolutely it's, it's yeah. not inexpensive. You're correct, but A, uh, the city of Cincinnati is investing some resources in helping to uh, 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 make it possible for free for a homeowner to get a, an assessment of the solar potential for their home. Dis determining is so solar an, an, feasible. An, an inspection right? or an, an evaluation. inspection that gives a report that says, uh, yes, your, your uh, roof top um, can handle X number of solar panels. The cost of putting those in would be X dollars. You can pay for it over time. And so ultimately. Who do you pay? Uh, well, who do you, you pay for? Pay, it well, you, you, would pay, you would pay for a, a commercial solar installer who would aid who would install those solar panels. And he would wait for years to be paid? No, that'd be because you can get law interest loans. That's the point. The, the installer gets paid right away, but you are paying off a reduced lo rate okay. loan, so it makes it feasible. Who's so that underwriting that loan? Um, there are banks within this community that are underwriting. It's a, it's, a, it's a financially successful business model for them, just like they would make you a loan for a car, so a loan to install a solar panels. So low interest loan. You wouldn't be paying the uh, energy company, Duke or any other energy company, th those monthly payments wouldn't be made to them, it would be made You'd to be the bank? You'd be paid to the bank to pay, out, to pay off the loan, but you would still most likely, because your solar panel system would most likely not cover all of your energy consumption. Of course, you still pay utility bill to Duke, but your payment to Duke would be far less because your solar panels are actually generating a significant portion of your, ac of your energy consumption within your house. What but that's a, that's a creative solution, right? Mm -hmm. Don't we, wa we want to have, uh, we want to be one of the leading cities in the country in, the, in solar deployment for rooftop. Right now, we are the major, the largest city in America that has a 15-year property tax abatement for folks who build to lead gold standards for their for their home. You, what right? does that mean? That means that if you build a lead certified home that is certified to be energy efficient and uh, you know it, it goes through the the, the, the the process where it's officially determined that you meet the leads the the energy efficiency and design standards for your home that that meet, reach, reaches the lead standard, then you don't have to pay your property taxes to the city for 15 years. Are you sure about that? Absolutely, absolutely, and it's a, a huge incentive for well, people. You have to build a new house. A new house to this or, high standard. Or if you renovate you retrofit your house, if yeah. retrofit your house, you get a 10-year tax abatement if uh, on the improved so value of that years, house. you would not have to pay your annual tax fee? For if you renovate tax? your home, if you renovate your home and get your home into a lead, sil lead gold standard, yeah. uh, if you meet that standard, you don't have to pay property tax for 10 years on the incremental increase in the value of your home from the renovation that you that you gen that you right. did, right? If the home goes from 100,000 so to 200,000. Right, but the entire value. tax bill is not torn up. But so no. you don't go to from X number of thousands of dollars on property tax to zero. No, but you 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 would if it's a hundred thousand dollar home and you did improvements that brought the the assessed value up to two hundred thousand and you got that home certified as a gold certified you home. You wouldn't double you would, your tax bill. You would pay, it would well, you'd continue to pay the tax on the first hundred thousand. You wouldn't pay the tax on the uh, any property tax on the incremental additional value for house as a result of the renovation that got you to a gold standard for uh, lead certification. So it's a real incentive for homeowners to upgrade the energy efficiency of their home um, and generates jobs in Cincinnati. There's a reason for people if they're going to do, if they're going to buy a house and want it to be renovated into lead uh, gold, they, they can do that in Cincinnati and have an incentive financially to do so or to build a brand new home in the city. There's a heck of a financial incentive to do so. So Cincinnati is one of the lead cities in the country on the number of homes uh, and uh, uh, commercial properties that are lead certified that is energy efficient and properly uh, you know, uh, built with energy considerations in mind, meeting that standard in the entire country. It's one of the reasons why we have uh, per capita more uh, firms and, uh, uh, and um, lead APs, that is uh, people who have professional certification in, in lead design, uh, here, here in, the, in the city of Cincinnati. It's an incredible asset we have. I, I haven't heard much about yeah, this. We've got to get some people on the show to talk about it. It's great. It's one of the things that's very unique about it, which is why we have one of the strongest. Maybe if we have time during the break, we can switch chairs. But All in the right. meantime, we have to take a break. Folks, stay with us. We'll be right back.
The views expressed on Make Peace with Nature are those of the participants and not necessarily those of this station or the program's underwriters. My guest is Brewster Rhodes. He's been on the show before. He was on last week. He is on, seated here. And we have a few more minutes to question him about the amazing things. I am amazed by what he just said about this tax abatement. I don't live in the city of Cincinnati. And frankly, if I wanted to, I couldn't afford to enlarge my house or recertify it. I just, I lack the means to do so. What about the people who do pay high energy bills because they can't afford more attic insulation or they can't afford a more high efficiency furnace or they can't afford to put in special windows which are thermal well, windows? For, for, what, are you, what, what are you doing? Well, the, the, fir the first thing you do is to get an energy assessment, an audit of your home. Right. Which, the greater, for that, by the, which way. the greater Cincinnati Energy Alliance is able to provide at zero cost depending on the size of your home. So you get a report that says for, for um, that this is what it's going to take in order for your energy consumption to be reduced by 20 or 30 percent in terms of insulation, uh, st windows that need to be replaced perhaps, uh, uh, tightening of the envelope they call it. My wife and I did that exact same uh, initiative project. We, you know, we had an assessment done of our home and determined that um, we could save about 25 percent of our energy consumption if we made an investment that would be about a 12-year payback and so we're about six years off <laughs> from reaching our payback, but we didn't invest in upgrading the windows and the extensive uh, so you insulation. Did it, you did, you we did, did it, and it, and, it, and it paid off. And I'm sorry to say, you, you, you achieved a 25 percent? Well, about 22, okay, very close. Mm -hmm. So we were pleased with that. We did, and then in turn, get an assessment done about solar on our rooftop. And so that's a separate assessment? A separate assessment, and um, I had a, a, one of the wonderful solar companies in town, Dovetail Solar, do an analysis of what it would Take. But that's also on the house. You don't pay for that. Um, no, this was a free assessment from them, and they were a commercial okay. company. They so came both in and of did these an assessment. assessments are at no cost. Absolutely, to you. both. Of, and the city of Cincinnati has a solarized Cincinnati program right now, where the city can, will provide free assessments to see if solar will work for you. It, it's a challenge for us, given all the trees around our yeah, property, exactly. and we are not inclined to take down these gorgeous trees. No, well, you would be so, crazy. It would yeah. be, a, it, which it also would provides be additional uh, shade, et cetera, for us. Yeah. But that's a private choice, and and we may move in that direction. But I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that the city of Cincinnati, Hamilton County, there's increasing in, uh, uh, support for efforts to uh, help people figure out what they can do to save energy in their home and in their business. Now, just recently. Uh, you may have read there was a lawsuit against Duke Energy. It took about eight years to work out. Just settled two weeks ago uh, by the federal court judge. He set up, uh, it's a, they have to uh, give rebates. That is, Duke has to give rebates to residential and commercial customers, a certain amount, averaging about 200 for a commercial, up to four, I mean, for residential, up to 400 for commercial. Uh, but the judge set aside $8 million in that settlement to put into a fund. I'm on the board, I'm the, pre I'm the chair of the board, actually, uh, to give away $8 million in what's called the Consumer Benefit Fund uh, to residential and commercial customers, that is, to invest in projects that will help it, uh, residential and commercial customers can they use in the, the Duke money service in, area. Can you use the money in some other way? Uh, no, it has to be used to reduce energy consumption, to help uh, do education. So the average person watching this program who, who lives in the city of Cincinnati, it doesn't affect Norwood. Who lives in southwest Ohio in the Duke service area. Correct. But, but not in northern Kentucky. No, right? but, uh, but who have who've, who've, uh, uh, 220,000 people filed online to get a rebate that was due them, and they will be getting a rebate in the next few months from so the as settlement. A, as a credit on their energy An bill? actual check. It, may, check. Be, it may also be a credit. I'm, so, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work out, but, but you will benefit the, the directly. The people watching will get uh, between $200 and $400? If, if, if they're a residential customer of, of Duke Energy in, the, in Ohio, okay, and they, and they filed, over 200,000 people did in fact file. Um, so over 20% of all the customers did in fact file to get that rebate. So that's coming in the mail pretty shortly. That's wonderful. The, the point I'm making, though, is that the, dish, the settlement also called for putting $8 million that Duke actually provides as part of the settlement into a fund to, in turn, use to help promote uh, energy conservation uh, for residential and commercial customers in the Duke service area. So we're going to be essentially operating as a small foundation to help uh, promote you know, through incentives, revolving loan funds that we'll be setting up, we think, um, and efforts to actually help people conserve energy in their home. 
So it can't, it's not just necessarily solar. It could be more attic insulation. Absolutely. It could be uh, a more energy efficient furnace. It could be a more energy efficient water heater. Exactly, okay. exactly. So that's exciting. It's the first time in the country that a settlement of a class action lawsuit against the utility for um, overcharging, frankly, uh, and is going to be benefiting folks this way. But their interest would be uh, not to oppose such a settlement because, quite frankly, and uh, there's nothing wrong with this, it is in their self-interest to spend this money because exactly. it, it, it reduces the need to either maintain older, non-conforming uh, coal burning fire plants. Or to build new generation capacity, which is very expensive. Or build, right. right. Or and go to wind power. And well, Duke has been very, very, very uh, a, a wonderful partner, frankly, with this settlement and with this process, and will be a partner in happy to helping to make sure the money it gets spent in ways that will actually help people conserve energy. So that's kind of unique. We're the only city in the country that's had a settlement like that. So, so the judge has ordered and has created a five-member board of, yes. of essentially laypersons. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you are the chairman of I'm the chairman of the board. board, and so that'll be the something we do over the next two years. Right, so it's over a two-year period. Yes. Now, do you have to answer to the judge? Or yes, we have to have the judge sign off on all the actions that we take as a, as a board of this con uh, uh, consumer benefit fund. We're calling Where it. will you get the time to go to 220,000? No, that's all, it's all automated. It, there's a process for having the rebates done. We don't have anything to do with that. Our job is to help identify projects and, and programs that actually are in the, that are based in the community that already exist. We're not going to create anything new that will help uh, residential and commercial customers conserve energy. So that's exciting. So that's one of the things I'm doing, Dave. I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's great fun. All right. Now, uh, other than that, you have spent some time in the Everglades. Well, I'm, you know, I, I, I love I love the Florida Keys and spent a lot of time down there and doing canoeing and kayaking. But you know, that since we used that beautiful video at yeah. the beginning, which was so so captivating and so evocative and moving, uh, I've never been to the Everglades. Uh, isn't there talk that it's the Everglades aren't in the best shape? Well, there's a whole restoration project, it's a multi-billion dollar project in Florida to, to improve the quality of the w flow of the water, the, 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 the volume and the speed of the flow of water from Lake Okeechobee down. But that's a whole separate question. But I just wanted to also, before we finish here, just mention about our High River Paddle Fest once yes, again. Yes, of course, so by all means, yeah. we have plenty of time. So this year, this year is the 15th annual uh, Ohio River Paddle Fest. And Dave, it's become, uh, I, I and others started this 15 years ago, and it's become the largest paddling event in the country right here uh, in Cincinnati. And so um, this, this uh, August, the 6th of August, we'll be having about 1,500 to 2,000 people uh, paddle eight miles down the Ohio, nine miles down the Ohio River from Schmidt Field to the Riverside Park to four miles downstream from downtown Cincinnati. And it's just a great opportunity for people to see the Ohio River, feel it, touch it, be very close in, 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 to it um, didn't during, you during have a three-hour trip. Didn't you have to postpone or cancel? We did last time. Be, last year we had to because it was a hurricane that came through Cincinnati the day we were having the event, so we had to postpone it for six weeks. Um, but it so did take place. It did take place. But what, I'm real, yeah. the theory behind it is solely to give them to understand what a resource there is in the Ohio River. Well, it's not to teach aquatic skills. No, no. First of all, first of all, it's fun. You know, it's a, really, it's a unique, unique experience. The river is shut to power boat and barge traffic for the four-hour period of the of the paddle. But it, but also, it's a it's a, it's a the only time of the year most people actually paddle their canoes or kayaks in the Ohio River. Uh, we have people from 17 states who come to Cincinnati to experience that. Uh, but invariably, people get off the Ohio at the takeout, the finish line, and say how impressed they are with uh, how it's, the river is much more clean, uh, much more safe, much more beautiful than they expected it to be. And folks are there, they're, they're by much more willing and interested in getting involved in an organization. There are many of them that work to help improve the quality of, of the water in the streams and tributaries that flow into the Ohio, get involved in stream cleanup efforts, um, and think through what, they, what can they do uh, to continue to improve the quality of the Ohio and its tributaries. Would you repeat the dates? Uh, it's the 6th of August. Um, is that a Sunday? It's a Saturday. And the website is uh, OhioRiverPaddleFest.org, OhioRiverPaddleFest.org. Uh, is there an admission fee? Yeah, there's a registration. And we raise money from uh, registrants and sponsors at PaddleFest that also then uh, is used to benefit the Outdoor Adventure Clubs program of Greater Cincinnati, which I'm on the board of. I'm currently the president of the board as well. But it's an outstanding three-year-old volunteer-led nonprofit organization based here in, the t in Cincinnati that works in 20 area high schools, inner city high schools, to get inner city teens out into nature every month year-round. 
and we uh, do about 450, 500 kids with a six hour outing, fishing, paddling, um, uh, cycling, uh, climbing, camping uh, during, during the course of a year. Of a, well, each month we take out about 450 kids. So it's over, over 3,000 kids during the course of a year. And these are young people who would most likely not do those things if it weren't for the club arranging these outings and paying for the transportation mm -hmm. and lunches. Well, we only have 30 seconds, and since I'm conducting the program, I'm going to say what I have to say. I think it is fair to say that of all the people that I've interviewed for lo these many years, calm down, you have done the one thing that I'm most interested in personally. It can accurately be said, truly be said, that you will have left things better than you found. Well, you're very kind, and I hope so. Thank you very much, well, David. And thank you very much. And God bless. And of course, thanks to all of you for taking the time to watch. Please watch next week.